مسیح یسو کے عظیم بابر کے جلالی نام میں آپ تمام نیشنل نیوز ایک سوال پر خدا ان کی سلامتی ہو میں ویلکم کرتا ہوں پروگرام گواہی میں گواہی جس طرح سے آپ جانتے ہیں کہ اس پروگرام میں ہم مختلف پاسٹر صاحبان کو اور بشپ صاحبان کو انوائٹ کرتے ہیں اپنے اسٹوڈیو میں ہم اپنے ساتھ ان کو بٹھاتے ہیں اور ان سے ان کی ٹیسٹمنیز کے حوالے سے پوچھتے ہیں کہ کس طرح سے انہوں نے لارڈ جیزس کرائس کو اپنا سیویئر قبول کیا تو آج ہمارے ساتھ پاسٹر برینٹ موجود ہیں اور لاسٹ ایئر بھی جب یہ ہمارے پاس آئے تو ان کے پاس ٹائم نہیں تھا کہ وہ ہمیں انٹرویو دے سکیں تو خداون نے آج پاسبل کیا کہ آج وہ ہمارے ساتھ موجود ہیں اور ان سے ان کی گواہی کے بارے میں جانیں گے تو ابھی وقت ہے کہ ہم ان سے ملاقات کریں ہیلو پاسٹر برینٹ وی آر ویلکمنگ یو ان آور اسٹوڈیو تھینک یو سو مچ اٹس اے گریٹ پرولیج ٹو بی وت یو ہیئر آن دا نیشنل نیوز اینڈ ویل ڈن فار دا گڈ ورک دیٹ یو ڈوئنگ ہیئر ان پاکستان اینڈ آئی ایم شور دیز چینلز گو راڈ راؤنڈ ٹو ڈفرنٹ کنٹریز ایز ویل کیپ اپ دا گڈ ورک یس تھینک یو سو مچ اینڈ آئی ریسیو آل دا بلیسنگز ہو گیو اس for our channel and for our team. Thank It's you so much. It's always a privilege to share on national news yes. and so thank you for the opportunity. Last year, I forget uh, to, uh, just like an interview we are conducting mm. right now, uh, I want to ask uh, how you uh, accept the Lord Jesus mm. Christ as your Savior. Wow. It's, I always love telling that story and uh, I'm 50 years old now and oh. so... Uh, But I'll, you are <laughs> looking very <laughs> young. But I was, a, I was a young man. In fact, I grew up in South Africa, the country where I live, and, and South Africa is very different to Pakistan because in South Africa, it's known as a Christian country. Oh. And so there's many Christians in South Africa, which is a good thing. But the problem is you think, hey, I'm not a Hindu, I'm not a Muslim, so I must be a Christian. Oh. So, so many people, they think they are Christian, but they've never received Jesus. Jesus. They've never been born again. And so for me, that's how I was growing up. I went to church maybe at Christmas time. If it was Passover, Easter, we would go. Occasionally. Occasionally, yeah. that's it. And I thought, I'm a Christian. But then when I was 17 years old, in fact, I remember the 19th of August, 1989. Okay. That was you the remember time. The I remember the yeah. day because that's the day that's everything what? changed. And it was interesting. Uh, there was a, a group of teenagers. They were finished high school, but they were traveling around the country. They were going to visit different high schools and different mm -hmm. churches to do a little program, gospel presentation. Yes. And uh, I was still in high school. I was, uh, had not finished. I had one more year of high school. And I had a friend in, uh, in my class and he gave me an invitation. Those were the days, no WhatsApp. These were the days you give someone <laughs> an invitation. And they gave me an invitation. He said, please come to my house for some tea, for some cake. I want you to meet some of these friends. Okay. Now, I came from a small town where there's nothing to do in the evening. <laughs> so oh. I was thinking uh, either I sit at home and do nothing or maybe I get free cake, free. <laughs> and so... <laughs> I went across to my friend's house okay. and, uh, and I met this team and, and I'll never forget the, the leader of this team. He was maybe 24, 25 years old and, and we began a conversation, eating cake, drinking tea, and he began to talk to, to me mm -hmm. about Jesus. And, you know, I was, not, I was not doing drugs. I was not a bad person okay. in some way, but inside there yeah. was something missing. Inside. I was one of those searching for something more, searching okay. for more meaning. Good. And when I remember the conversation I had with this, this man, he, there was something in his eyes. He had, he had a passion. He had a purpose. You know, when you can see someone, yes. they're living for a, for, for a dream. Okay. And, and as he was talking, I just, I began to think to myself, I want what he's got. What he's got is what I need here. Oh, and I, I never forget, I'd heard about Jesus before. Can I show you a simple illustration? Because yes. this is now 33 years later, I still remember the same illustration. He told me that day, he said, I want you to picture as if we've got lights here in the studio, as if the light that shines down is God's love for you. God wants you, if this is you, God wants you to live in the light of his love, his yeah. purpose, his plan. So this is you. He's made you to live in his light. Right. Problem is sin. Oh, that's the problem us. exactly yeah. as soon as we sin it's like now there's no light look no over light. here now it's in the shadow now you're in the darkness that's why people are empty that's why people mm. do drugs that's why people get into all of these uh, sinful things because they're living in the darkness but they want to be in the light but sin this is the problem and then no matter what we do we can't get out from underneath But this is the wonder of Jesus. This is Jesus right here. Oh, and we pleasure. know that Jesus never sinned. He came from the Father. He never sinned once. So we sitting under here. He was sitting in the light of God his whole life. But when he came to the cross, when Jesus was dying on the cross, this is what happened. Oh. That's what happened. That's right. In that moment, That's all of our sin was placed upon Jesus. And he died. That sin, he paid the price. He took the punishment of God. 
And the result was, we know that God raised him because he'd never, he raised him from the death. But look now, now we get to live in the light. Now we are in the light. Exactly. Yes. And I remember that day. That's such a simple illustration. But for me, it's like the lights turned on. <laughs> Suddenly I realized that's what I want. So then he said to me, come on Saturday evening. We're doing a little show at the church. And, mm -hmm. and I went to the back of the church. It was a small Baptist church. And I was sitting right at the back. And, and I don't even remember what the preacher was preaching about. But my heart, there was something saying, I oh, need this gospel. Need this and I put up my hand. I prayed. And that was 33 years ago. And since then, I know the, I know the power of salvation because something changed inside. Insane. You know what? I, I wasn't trying to be different. I was different. I wanted to read the Bible. I wanted to go to church. I wanted to be with God's people. And I soon realized one day I want to be a pastor. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. It's a very great. And uh, one thing I know about yourself, um, which is, uh, in field you studied? Yeah, I studied engineering actually. I trained to be an engineer at university. Okay, civil engineer or mechanical engineer? No, no, engineer? actually I did electronic. I electronic worked for electronics, computer-based electronic engineering, okay, yes. Excellent. And you, you are still doing your job or no, not? No, <laughs> no. full-time pastor? I'm a full-time pastor. In yeah. fact, I yeah. studied for four years at the university and I got my degree. But after only three years of working, okay. I, I had the opportunity to, oh. to go full time into the, the church in ministry and then eventually to start our own church. Um, but you know what's interesting is I knew, back to my testimony, I used to feel sorry for pastors. <laughs> <laughs> I thought to myself, what a boring job. They have to be in church almost every day. Every I think, day. Oh. But then after the 19th of August, that's why I said something changed on the inside. Within a few months of becoming a believer, I knew one day I want to be a pastor. One day I want to be able to lead a church. That's why it was good to study. I enjoyed becoming an engineer. But for me, it wasn't a sacrifice to give up the engineering. It was for me a great privilege. And now I've been a pastor 25, 26 years or something. Now you, your church, what is your church name? The name of the church is Outlook Church. And uh, your congregation in your church? I love him. What about my congregation? Um, about numbers. Oh, about numbers. I don't know. I'm not such a good pastor like you. I don't know. There's a, there's a few hundred, maybe six, seven, eight hundred. Oh, I'm, I'm not it's sure. It's a good number. It's, it has. It's grown. But we've yeah. been going 22 years now. For 22 years, we've seen the church start from when uh, my wife and I, there were only three. So I know what it's like to have a very small church. But over the years, little by little, the church has been growing. Growing. And uh, yes. it's a great. Last year you visited Pakistan. Yes. And uh, what is your plan to next year's? Uh, and you visit other countries yes, as I well? I do have the privilege. I come from South Africa and so I get to visit. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was in Zimbabwe, oh. which is another nation just next to South Africa Thanks. and got to minister to some of the, the pastors and the leaders. I also love going to South America for the 17, 18 years now. Every oh, year. Every year. You every visit. year I've been traveling to Venezuela, to Colombia and to, uh, to Brazil Excellent. to preach the gospel and to work with pastors and leaders. And uh, very interesting, many of the pastors from South America, because they speak Spanish, Spanish, many of them have moved to Spain in Europe to start new churches. Excellent. So I've been to Spain a few times now in Europe to begin to preach and work with pastors there. But for me, this has been a great privilege coming to Pakistan. Pakistan. This is now our third visit. Your and, third uh, visit. And you Pakistan. know, when you, when you look in the book of Acts, hmm. remember you see uh, Paul and Barnabas, they, oh, they were traveling, but they didn't just go once. Uh, different places. But yes. they went to different places, but then they went again. Then they went again. Inventive. Now we have the privilege of being able to fly on airplanes now and be able to go from one country to another. So for me, I love to visit once, but when you go once, then you're a guest. You're a foreigner in a different nation. You go again, now you're starting to build friendship. Build but friendship. when you go three times, now we're building family. Yes. And so we are definitely, Excellent. that's our commitment to try and once a year come and do some training and some working with the pastors because we want to see the leaders as the leaders, as the pastors get better, as they train more leaders, then the churches grow and everybody gets better. Oh, wonderful. And uh, you are following the, first of all, Jesus and second Paul. I'm, and third one, you. I'm telling you, that's a privilege. Yeah. We, we, we need, we need lots of apostles. Hmm. Now, sometimes people think apostle is a title. He's the biggest man of God. No, I think apostles are like engineers. <laughs> Remember, Paul, he went to lay the foundation. Yes, he went to build churches. And for me, that's an engineering ministry. We don't need super apostles with big titles. And we need 
young men and women, people of, who love Jesus, who yeah. will help build and establish and grow churches. And so that's my privilege. Uh, uh, Paul, as you said about your engineering, Paul also built a tent. Yes, 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 yes. He was an amazing man. Mm. He's definitely one of my heroes. Yeah. And uh, I'd love to be able to do even a little bit of the work that, uh, that Paul was doing. Yes. Excellent. Uh, very nice to talk to you, with you. Thank you so Pastor much. Brent. Thank you so much. Thank you for your hospitality. We love being here in Pakistan. Myself and my team, we love the hospitality. We love the food. We love the <laughs> friendship. We love uh, spending time with you. And thank you for this opportunity on national news. And I love your teaching. Um, thank Last you for the year. encouragement. <laughs> I hope to be back and I hope to see more of you yes. next year. and More pastors come along and join us for the training next year. جی ناظرین ابھی آپ نے ملاقات کی فاسٹر برینڈ سے اور بہت شاندار ان کی ٹیسٹمنی ہے انہوں نے بتایا کہ کس طرح سے خدا ان کے دل کو چینج کیا وہ ان ایک آدمی سے ملے جنہوں نے ان کو انوائٹ کیا اپنے چرچ میں یہ ان کے ساتھ گئے اور خدا نے ان کے دل کو چینج کیا اور آج جب کہ وہ الیکٹرانک انجینئر ہیں اس کے علاوہ انہوں نے اس میں ڈگری حاصل کی اور اس کے بعد بھی انہوں نے خداون سے اپنے دل کو لگا لیا اور خداون نے انہیں اتنا سرفراز کیا کہ اب وہ پالوس رسول جس طرح سے انہیں بتایا کہ پال ان کا فیوریٹ ہیرو ہے ان کو یہ فالو کرتے ہیں اور اسی طرح سے یہ ملکوں میں گھومتے ہیں جو وہاں پر جا کے قرآن کے کلام کی منادی کرتے ہیں اور دوسرے لوگوں کو انوائٹ کرتے ہیں کہ وہ خدا یہ سمسی کو اپنا نجات ہندہ اپنا سیویئر مانے اور ابھی بھی یہ پاکستان میں تھے انہوں نے کانفرنس کی تھری ڈیز پاسٹرز اینڈ ریڈرس کانفرنس اور اٹس اے گریٹ میں نے بھی اس کا حصہ بنا اور میں نے اس کو اٹینڈ کیا اور میں بہت شکر گزار رہا ہوں ویری تھینک فل پارٹ آف یور سیمینار ایکسلینٹ تو ابھی مجھے اجازت دیں تو آپ سے دوبارہ اگلے سال ملاقات کروائیں گے فاسٹر برینڈ کی خدا مد آپ کے ساتھ ہو بہت شکریہ بائے بائے